Well, hello, and here we are with another deck review. The uh, deck I'm reviewing this time is the Happy Halloween Tarot. And this is a Kickstarter deck, uh, indie deck that I had backed uh, several months ago. Came in, I think, last week. And what can I tell you? It's an absolutely beautiful deck, and I was really looking forward to having it. And I am sadly <laughs> reporting that I am terribly disappointed in it at the end. But let's go through it and you'll have some opportunity to make your own decision as to whether or not this is a deck that you want to add to your collection. Now let's start off with the, the good stuff. Um, no, the fantastic stuff. Um, how many of us have those little black cloth bags that we've got tarot deck stuffed into and then when you want to go find your whatever deck you got five six bags that you have to go through before you find the right one well here's the one that came with this one i am going to know immediately that this is the happy Halloween tarot um, deck that's in it love it and it is just a beautiful little bag and it fits the the um cards in their box in it so you don't have to make a choice between the bag or the box very very well done this is deck was uh, created by a woman by the name of sonny graves and uh according to her kickstarter page uh she's a bit of a, a mad woman when it comes to uh halloween i completely get it my best friend that's what uh she is all things halloween absolutely loves it and the joy and the passion of that comes through on this deck completely. Um, the box is good and sturdy. On the back, she has a bit of an explanation that she uses uh, some Spanish terms in it. Doesn't bother me one way or another. I read enough French that it's not problematic and uh, kind of go from there. Now, let's, let's start off talking about the cards. Now that all the cards are uh, got rounded corners on it. I don't think anybody does the, the kind of square cuts anymore. Um, they're a good weight. They really are. There's some bend to them, but they're stiff enough and they don't feel flimsy. They've been coated um, and they're super shiny, super shiny cards. You can see the light coming off them, uh, but they're not super slick. What a great combination. Um, these cards, they're a good size. I have hands that run on the smallish side and I have absolutely no problem shuffling them. Uh, like I said, the, they got a kind of slick glossy finish on them, but you don't have cards flying all over the room. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the design of the cards. Uh, we're looking at the majors. Now here's the death card. I think it's really nice. I like the design of it. Um, the Empress and um, I like I like it as well I like the Empress cards where people are getting away from the obviously pregnant although this could be a pregnant pumpkin who knows um, we have the judgment card and you see the uh, people come out of their graves right now judgment day or whatever uh so you're getting a lot of these symbols that you find in the standard rws and uh there is the the name of the card written on the bottom of each of them and this is temperance which i think was one of my favorite of the majors i really like the design on this the palette that she has chosen to use the white black yellow and orange obviously goes together well and she has deployed it masterfully it is wonderful you may have noticed as we were going through that the background of each of the cards is not all the same so some of them have a black background some of them have white some of them have the uh, other two colors so there's a lot of variety this is a very colorful deck to deal with um, same with the court cards that we have um, now the court cards, the titles are written in Spanish and English, like Spanglish. Um, so here we have um, the Page of Wands and we have the King of Swords, Rien de Wands, uh, the Queen of Wands. Now going through this, 
my understanding of Queen of Wands, I don't know. I don't know why it would be depicted as a woman dancing with some bats in her room. Um, that's not how that energy kind of speaks to me. So I'm really curious as to why the artist made these kind of decisions. And here comes one of the problems with the deck is that there is no uh, guidebook. And guidebooks to me are seen as like artist statements, right? I would love to know why she has chosen to depict the Queen of Wands in this manner. And I'm sure that once I knew what her reasoning was, it would be, oh yeah, not the way I would have done it, but uh, no, I see your point, right? Uh, here is the Knight of Wands. And again, you know, that kind of fleeing off, uh, no direction intended kind of energy. Yeah, that makes sense to me completely. So no problem with the majors. No problem with the court cards. So Kate, what is your problem? And my problem, unfortunately, is the minors. Now, it's very obvious that this one is the two of cups. There's two cups on it. Um, and I can read that easily. It's when we get into some of the more complicated or higher up, higher numbers up than it is. Um, I originally did this, this is my second time of doing this review because the first time I had gone through it, I was saying that there was no numbers on it. Like this is, uh, uh, I can't tell you, that's the problem. This, this card is the eight of pentacles. And I think this is the eight of cups. But you have to be looking very, very, very closely to see that up on the top, inside the little bat, there's a number. Now, I'm old, my eyesight is feeble, and that means that these numbers, I didn't see them until I was editing the first take of this video, and I could see when I put up an, under huge magnification, um, that these numbers were there. So that's why I had to reshoot this because my original criticism was there was no numbers. Well, there are numbers there. I just can't see them. And I did try experiment wise to um, take a Sharpie and put a number on it. This is for the 10 of cups. However, I don't wanna be doing this. And you know, what good is that going to do me on the cards that have a black background. Um, and I really don't uh, foresee me doing that. And, and because of that, it's very confusing. And again, I have no guidebook in order to relate to. Once the cards come out of the box and I shuffled them, and I've shuffled the hell out of these like I do with every new set of tarot cards that come home, um, I originally thought that this was the Two of Swords. And then I noticed that the border around the swords in here were also swords. And I counted them up and this is the 10 of swords. This is the two of swords, right? Now, do I as a reader want to be going through and doing a reading and trying to figure and having to count up what, how many little spiders I got or whatever in order to figure out what card I'm dealing with? No. I don't have time for it and I don't like that kind of sloppiness in my readings and I'm I'm just not willing to do it. Now, right now I'm under pretty high power uh, studio lighting. It's not the normal lighting that I would have like say at a Halloween uh, party where I would, you know, I'm kind of stuck in the corner someplace and I have a little table and I'm doing readings as part of the entertainment. I can't see these these numbers. Uh, maybe something that's fantastic for somebody who has, you know, eyesight that a sniper would envy, then it goes well. But uh, for somebody who has any kind of um, visual impairment at all, no matter how mild it might be, um, I think you would have problems with this. Uh, first of all, there's not consistent contrast in it. So sometimes it's white on black and sometimes it's orange on black and sometimes it's black on orange. 
the numbers are very, very tiny. Um, there hasn't been a lot of attention paid to whether or not we have uh, a great deal of contrast in it. Um, so it to me isn't uh, very useful. And it's a shame because I really bought this deck with the anticipation that I would be able to take this to like Halloween parties and have some fun with it. And I just can't, I can't read with this. So for someone like me who has uh, some visual impairment, um, this is a novelty deck. If you're looking for a working deck, I don't think this is going to be it. And it really bothers me to say this because it is an absolutely beautiful deck. It's fun, it's whimsical, there's so much good to say for it. It's, you know, very thoughtfully been put together. I mean, just look at this, you know, bag, right? Sonny Graves has put or Sonny Graves has put a lot of thought into this and it's such a shame that that one little detail is detracting so much from her deck. So if you have perfect eyesight, by all means, it's a, it's a nice deck. And if you have less than perfect eyesight, you don't have a guidebook and it is going to be a struggle. So that's my review for the Happy Halloween deck. I wish it was better, but it is what it is, and I will see you next week. We will have another deck review because I just realized I have like a hundred sitting over there. <laughs> we need to do some reviews. Anyways, talk to you later. Bye-bye for now.